All right, next week we're going to be working on lesson 4.10. And parents, you'll be very happy to know that this is a long division. Um, you might see it as place the first digit on their practice paper they might bring home. Um, but this is how we were taught growing up, so you should have no problem teaching them how to use this strategy. My first example is going to be 349 divided by 9. And this is why this lesson is called place the first digit, so that you are putting the numbers in the correct place value. Now I know that 9 does not go in to 3, so I now need to look at 34. And this time we're just looking at it's 34 tens. I know 9 times 27, I'm sorry, 9 times 3 is 27, and that's as close as I can get. So I'm going to put my 3 above. I'm going to multiply 3 times 9 is 27, and I'm going to subtract the hundreds here. And I'm going to have 7 left over. I'm now going to bring down my 9 in the 1's place and ask, well, how many times does 9 go into 79 1's? And they can go through and say, well, I know 9 times 7 is 63, 9 times 8 is 82, I'm sorry, 72, and that's as close as we can get. So we put our 8 up top and multiply 8 times 9, and that gives us 72. We subtract it out, and we have 7. Now I ask myself, will 9 go into 7? And they all should all say no. So we now have a remainder of 7. So our final quotient on this problem is 38, remainder 7. I'm sure all of you remember learning it this way. Um, I would please recommend uh, that you put the arrow where you're bringing it down so the child knows that they have used that place value. Also something I would maybe ask them to do if they're not figuring out where the place, place values go when they're writing their quotient is maybe take care of that first one with a zero so they know they need to move on to the next place value. Our next example is going to be 628 divided by 4 and this time 4 does go into 6 one time and I'm going to multiply 1 times 4 and that gives me 4 and I subtract it out and so I'll have two hundreds left and then I'm going to bring down my two tens. I now ask myself, well, how many times does 4 go into 22? I should say 5 times. So 5 times 4 is 20, and I'm going to subtract it. That gives me two tens left over, and I'm going to bring down my eight ones. And then ask again, well, how many times does 4 go into 28? And they should say 7 times 4 equals 28, and I subtract and I am not left with a remainder this time. So my final quotient is 157. The last example I would like to do is 346 divided by 2. And I know that 2 goes into 3 one time. I'm going to multiply that. So 1 times 2 gives me 200. I subtract it. Bring down my tens place. And I now have 14 divided by 2. And I do like the kids to circle what they're dividing by. It just helps them and gives them a good visual. I know that 7 times 2 is 14. I will subtract that and that leaves me with no tens place or tens left and so I have to drop my ones place down and ask well how many times does 2 go into 6? And they should say 2 times 3. We multiply that 3 times 2 gives me 6 and I subtract it and again we're left with no remainder. I would appreciate if you could make sure that the students are lining their place values up. My ones place, my tens place, and my hundreds are one on top of the other staying as neat as possible and I do like if they can make sure that they are using the arrows as well. We'll be working on this next week. Um, at this point though I'd like them to continue mastering their partial quotients which I know all the parents are huge fans of. Uh, keep up the hard work. I appreciate everything you do.